Today I'm showing you how to do a Citroen C1 gearbox oil change. Doing a box oil change also necessitates doing a Citroen C1 gearbox oil level check. What I'm going to show you today applies to the 1 litre engine for both the Peugeot 107 Citroen C1 and the Toyota Igo. Now on all of those cars none of them specify a gearbox oil change though they do specify an oil level check at 40,000 miles or four years. For long life, I would suggest that you change the oil in the gearbox at around the 50, 60,000 mile mark. But it is generally true to say that gearboxes will last longer and remain reliable if you do some regular oil changes during their lifespan. The manufacturer's definition of life is normally 10 to 12 years, 120, maybe 150,000 miles. You could probably drain the oil without raising the car off the ground. There's just about enough room underneath. But the gearbox fill and level plug is halfway up the front face of the gearbox and is extremely difficult to get to from above. So you really will need to raise the car in order to be able to get at that plug. So raise the car on axle stands or use ramps like I have here. I've put an additional piece of chipboard underneath the ramp on the right hand front wheel so that the right hand front wheel is about an inch or so higher than the left hand because the drain plug is on the left hand end of the gearbox so that will help the oil flow out of the drain anyway let's get underneath and I'll show you how to get at the two plugs if we look underneath from the front left hand corner looking diagonally backwards towards the uh, rear right hand corner right next to this engine gearbox mount you will find the drain plug almost directly below the inner CV joint. The fill plug is just this side of the seam, just out of sight on this picture, right next to the connector for the lower O2 sensor. You'll need to get slightly underneath and look up to be able to see it. Neither plug is done up to a particularly high torque. 30 Nm for the drain plug and 40 Nm for the fill plug. You will need a 24 mm spanner or socket to undo them. However, both of these plugs are a little awkward to undo. I found the drain plug to be easy enough, no problem there, but I did find that a couple of corners have been uh, rounded off on my fill plug, and as a result, to get good purchase with my spanner on the fill plug, I had to flatten off the lead-in on, on one side of my spanner. The reason for that is that the, uh, the hex head on both the drain and fill plugs are both extremely shallow, only around five millimeters. So there really isn't a lot to get purchase on, so you will have to be careful. In fact, I would venture to suggest that if you're doing this job, that you purchase replacement plugs. I'll put some links for some suitable hex head replacements in the uh, description that will make it easier to get them on and off next time round. Top tip though, do make sure that you remove the fill plug first. Do not remove the drain plug until you've removed the fill plug. Not only does this allow air back into the gearbox as the oil comes out, but also the last thing you want to happen is to drain the oil out of the gearbox and then find you can't get this plug off to refill it. Position a suitable drain pan underneath. I'm using the same one I use for engine oil changes. Simply unscrew and remove the lower drain plug and allow the oil to drain away. Allow the oil to drain now for a good 20 minutes to half an hour. So uh, go and get yourself a cup of tea while that's on the, on the go. Because of the position of the fill plug, I find using a funnel and a piece of hose to be the most effective and hassle-free way of filling the gearbox. This is often the case with uh, manual gearboxes with side-mounted fill and level plugs. If you look at these two photographs here though, you'll see that in order to prevent uh, getting a kink in the hose, which, could, which would prevent the oil from flowing through. I fed the hose down through the fan frame in order to keep the turn at the bottom to uh, the maximum possible radius to prevent a kink. Now with your fresh oil, whilst you've still got the drain pan underneath and the uh, drain plug out, gently pour in about a quarter of a litre and allow it to flow through and drain out of the bottom just to take with it the final uh, old oil. We turn the drain plug to the gearbox Talk it up to 30 newton meters. Now the official way of checking the level on this gearbox is to remove the level plug with the car on level ground and oil should just about drip from the hole. 
that means we've got a right load of palaver on our hands, filling up the gearbox, dropping the car back down, checking the oil level, raising the car back up to put the fill plug back in. Now the stated capacity is 1.7 litres, so I've carefully measured out 1.7 litres of oil. I suggest you do the same and simply pour in that 1.7 litres with the gearbox empty. Remember to pour in gently. Now I'm using a piece of garden hose to fill this with an ordinary plastic funnel. The garden hose is exactly 18 millimetres in diameter and just fits in the fill hole. If you need to get some tubing, then buy some tubing with an overall outside diameter of 16 millimetres. It will be a much better fit. The oil specified for this gearbox is a GL4 75W. 75W is actually quite hard to get, so I'm using this Manol Unigear 75W80, which is also a GL4. Whatever else you do, do not put GL5 into this gearbox. Don't forget to remove your funnel and hose and return the fill plug into place. <laughs> Believe me, you would not be the first person to have made that mistake. <laughs> and then you can drop the car on the ground and take it for a test drive. If you got value from this video, please consider supporting the channel and I shall see you next time.